Meccano, part number 187, road wheel, in plastic, from the late 1960s or early 1970s. When I first wrote this script, it was some five months before it's going to be aired, and rereading it, I came very close to actually rewriting it. Because these events, while still important now, they're nearly half a year ago. But I'm going to keep the script as it stands because there are some important lessons there. There's lessons about how we behave, integrity, honour. But it's also about facing up to challenges. Because when I wrote this, life was very different to what it is now. Hi folks and welcome back. Life is a funny old thing at times. Some of the hardest decisions we make, the ones that hurt the most at the time, in the long run, leave us healed. I'm writing this at the end of November 2022, standing at the edge of the proverbial cliff, knowing that I have to step out into the void beyond. My mother, who I've been providing daily care for for around six years, has finally reached a point where I, where we as a family, are unable to meet her growing daily needs. This comes down to some very simple decisions that have had to be made, covering things like safeguarding her needs, health and safety, her mental welfare, as well as ours. We knew this was coming. In fact, her health has declined so much in the last three months leading me to stopping the quick build on a Wednesday, the Monday what's on the bench, and uploading fresh videos to Patreon as I need to redesign how I interact with that. Also reducing what time I have to build models in general, let alone script write and edit. And all of this I gave up without a bat of an eyelid. After all, this is my mother. And I promised my father that we would walk with her as long as possible. I gave my word of honour that I would do my duty and I would not leave her to stand alone, forgotten. And now that that duty is done, now that we have to hand the baton on to others, we stand here like the last survivors of some huge battle, looking around at the carnage that has happened and thinking to ourselves, but what about us? What does our future look like? You see, I've been caring for other people 24 hours a day for the last quarter of a century. From a very ill daughter who is now a wonderful adult starting on her career as a mechanical engineer working on buses. Through to my in-laws in their old age, my wife as her addiction slowly consumed her until we were unable to live with her, but still supported her, albeit at arm's length, until finally she passed away to my parents in their final years. I haven't stood alone in my company since before this century turned, without the needs, cares and stresses of another hanging over my head. I don't know what it's going to be like, and to be honest, that scares me. I know that I'm gonna, going to be moving. Um, I have to as my mother's house has to be sold. I will be leaving my beloved Derwent side, a place where I've lived all my life, and moving elsewhere. I feel I need to heal. To allow the past to settle and remember the good times, while not forgetting the path I have walked. And while there is a sense of failure, I also know that I need to move on. That in the long run, years from now, I will know that I did my best with this. That while it hasn't been an easy task, it was, however, worth doing. And that's one of the most important things. We have to be able to look back on our lives and be able to say, I'm glad that I took that path, however hard it might have been at the time. And if my life has taught me anything, it is better to live honourably than to take the easy, softer route that doesn't challenge you. And what does this have to do with Meccano? Nothing whatsoever. But at some point this video will, will be dropping into the broadcasting list. And that might well be while I'm moving 
and my life will again be in turmoil. And this channel is not just about Meccano, it's also about life's lessons and not forgetting our past as our past is the cage that can imprison our future if we are not careful about understanding what has happened and prepared to listen to lessons that it has taught us. So my future is unknown to me as of yet, but it is up to me to take from it the best I can to learn those lessons that I've been taught, forged in the heat of the hearth that this job has been, and build that into a strength, not a weakness. Well, I always look back on this and wish we had listened more to the wisdom of our parents, the stories that they had to tell when they were younger, and there was more time. Yes, of course. But that is a double-edged to the blade of youth. When we are younger, there seems to be not enough time. We are always busy building our future, rushing from one place to another. And yet when there is time, it is always too late to enjoy the moment. So take the time to stop and listen, whether it's to your parents or to your children. Because time is draining away faster than you think. And before you know it, like a build, the last part is fastened up and it's finished. And then it's to take apart and put away in its box, never to be rebuilt. I'm talking of builds, let's discuss this one. Both of these are nice working models. The first is the Crane Yard, a derrick hoist that every station would have had. The purpose was for the loading and unloading of goods from wagons and flat trucks. But also, it's a very playable model, working nicely alongside either Hornby's O-gauge clockwork or its double O-gauge trains. At the time of this model though, in the late 1960s, the O-gauge had disappeared from the market. The moving van box displayed at the end is from that range of clockwork trains. It is inherently unstable, just as its real-life prototype. The base of the yard cranes were buried underground, allowing an anchoring point that couldn't be moved with ease. I opted to, to bolt on two extra parts, 48 A's, to act as cantilevers to take up that stress when the derrick was under load. As a child, this crane would have been great fun for loading and unloading of toy trains. At a point in my life when the scale would not have bothered me much. And as a perfect companion to its three-wheeled mechanical horse. We tend to think of the mechanical horse as being, as being a scammel design, but in fact it wasn't. It was first designed by Napier and Sons in the early part of the 1930s after a request from the railway operator London and North Eastern Railways. LNER, famous for the Flying Scotsman and the 100 miles per hour Mallard, had approached Napier to solve the problem of replacing horses on the network. The need was that the vehicle could still operate in the same working area as the horse and cart, so reducing the need to redesign and rebuild existing depots and stations, and had an easy method of coupling and uncoupling the flatbed. In 1933, Scammell purchased and redesigned the mechanical horse. The front wheel could steer through 360 degrees. With a 16-foot trailer, the whole vehicle could turn through 360 degrees in under 20 foot. A manoeuvrability which was unrivaled by other companies. The sales of the mechanical horse are reputed as being the saviour of Scammell lorries limited in the 1930s, as the depression bit deep into the company's ability to trade and the two designs, known as the 3-ton and 6-ton, were great successes, with some 14,000 being sold. With the design not only finding favour with the railways, but also in breweries, 
where their ability to operate in very tight areas was greatly appreciated. But also, their service was seen aboard aircraft carriers of the Royal Navy, again where the ability to operate in, in tight spaces was needed. In the late 1940s, the mechanical horse was redesigned and became the Scammell Scarab. The same engine was now used in both the three-ton and six-ton petrol variants. And there was also a diesel engine option using a British Perkins engine. The drivetrain and transmission was also redesigned to allow for ease and maintenance. The Scarab would continue in production until 1967. And I wonder if the British love of three-wheeled cars or cycle cars, as we still haven't made our minds up yet, is also behind the creation and popularity of the vehicle. This model is meant to have a magic motor fitted, and what a pain it was to fit. Again, I just could not get it to run well. Sometimes it was fine, other times it was just stubborn and underpowered. As always, I put a lot, a lot of that down to alignment. But also these motors are not new, and their springs have lost some power, which given their nearly 60 years of life, is not too unexpected. And as I write these scripts, I am reminded, all too bitterly, that these are the everyday things my parents would have seen, and that that time is coming to an end. What stories my mother has told me of her youth are now lost. We are left with the memories that, that I'm sharing with you on this channel of things that my parents have passed on. But they're like the last few withered leaves that once adorned the tree in the spring and summer of their young years. My parents who seem solid and immovable as any of the great castles built in this country are going to be remembered by the few that knew them and listen now to the reflections of their lives. And in another generation or two, any person watching this will be wondering maybe who they were. But life goes on. We move forward, and I intend to do so in a positive way. I've kept my promise, my vow to my father, for as long as I could. I know that I have done more than many would. And for the next year or two, I intend to stop and focus on rebuilding and then move forward. So for those of you who are still listening to this, thank you. Thank you for being the difference in one of my darkest moments. When we are driven by the storms of life. Thank you for being the inspiration for me to carry on, wanting to do more. Because you really do make the difference.